from 2000 to 2003, Bernard King could light it up for Aggie basketball. He is still the school's all-time leading scorer, just 10 points shy of 2000. Bernard was so good at scoring the ball because he was the smartest guy I've ever been around. He's the smartest player I've seen. He knew one through five, each position, what they were supposed to do, where they were supposed to be. He could score at every level of the floor. He could score all over the floor. He could get his own shot. Uh, he could score off the bounce. He could score off the catch. He could score in the post. He could score in the mid-range. He could shoot the three. He could score at the free throw line. If you put him on the line, you were going to pay. Uh, Bernard could really score all over the place. King also holds the school record for career free throws and is second in career three-pointers made and third in career assists. He was truly a rare offensive talent. King was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year in 2000 and made an all-Big 12 team in all four of his years at A&M. Bernard's a Hall of Famer in a lot of ways. I mean, look, on the floor, he was incredible. He, when he left, when he finished his playing career at A&M, he was the all-time leading scorer in the Big 12. He was number three in assists all time when he finished. Uh, he was consistent, uh, but he was everything for the team too. Not only on the floor, but also off the court, and how much he's done. But he's always come back, uh, and he's continued to do things on campus. He's continued to do things for the game with camps that he's done, at a &M camps that he's done in Houston and around the state. Uh, he's continued to give back to the, our campus community. He's continued to give back to the game. After Aggieland, he played nearly two decades professionally in Europe. He's home tonight and takes his place among legends. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Fame inductee, Bernard King. Howdy. Oh, man. Oh, oh. This, is, this, this moment is, 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 is surreal. It's a very surreal moment for me. Um, Pete, I don't know where Pete at. Where you at, Pete? Man, thank you for, um, for what you just said, man. Um, that means the world to me. Um, first of all, I would like to give thanks to God for just allowing me to be having this opportunity. It's definitely, it's definitely an honor to stand here besides the, these inductees. Um, this is big time, man, to be here besides Mike and Johnny and these guys, um, Coach Blair. Uh, I'm just lucky to be standing here with this class. Um, I always envisioned this moment. Um, a little small town from Gibson, Louisiana, a, little, a kid from a small town. I just always wanted to come here and I had big dreams. Um, it all started when I was six. And I can remember my mom saying to me, she gave me two options. She said, Bernard, you're either going to work or you're going to play basketball. <laughs> the choice was easy because um, Basketball was something that I always did. Um, my dad played ball, and um, from what my mom always said, I was a little younger, he always had me in the gym. So the choice was never, never hard for me. I never looked back once she gave me those, that decision. Basketball was more than just a sport to me. It was my first love, and it also was therapy. When I decided to come to a and I can remember so many people questioning my decision. Um, I had so many people trying to convince me to leave here. It's like, um, this is not a basketball school. We all knew that then coming in, it was, it was a football school. And um, that was one of the goals that I had when I first came here, is to, I had a, a vision, this being more than just a football school. I wanted to do something to change the narrative. I wanted this to be also about basketball. Thank you. Being at Texas A&M, that was one of the best choices I could have made. I know that, the, that if you go back and look at it, if you look at the wins and the losses, it, it, that's not even nothing to talk about there. Um, <laughs> but it was a, it was a, bigger, a bigger vision to me. Um, I, I really, I, I got to grow. I got to grow as a man and also as a, as a, as, a, as a kid coming from where I came from, a lot of us don't make it out. Um, I, I remember playing in my freshman year at a and and it was barely 2,000 people at the game. And I remember coming into my senior year playing in front of packed gyms. This was the vision that I always had. It never was about me. It never was about stats. I would trade that in any moment to, to, for, for this moment right here, at any moment. 
And um, I just stand here not just for me, but I also stand here for my teammates. I know Nolan is here tonight. Um, Mr. Ricky, thank you, man. I, I know I was, um, as you would say, hell. But um, hey, thank you for dealing with me all those years. Playing basketball at Texas A&M has really opened a lot of doors for me. It allowed me to grow as an athlete, as a leader, give back to my community, and it has also allowed me to play basketball 17 years professionally. <laughs> to Coach Hill, man, I want to thank you for believing in this little skinny kid from Gibson, Louisiana, helping me to believe in myself. You helped bring my vision for Texas A&M basketball to reality. I wish you were here to witness this moment and may your soul rest in peace. To my son, man, it means the world right now because if I, like someone said, if I would have got this award 15 years ago, then you wouldn't have got a, got a chance to see it. So to have him here, to be able to witness this moment, that means the world to me. <laughs> to my mom, Thank you. Thank you for always being on my side and always being my biggest supporter. I was amazed that you drove five hours to every game after working graveyard shift just to watch me play. I want to let you know that I never took that for granted. Thank you for always giving me strength when I was ready to give up. Thank you for sacrificing to make sure that I was okay. Thank you for all, always believing in me and being my rock. I thank God and I love you. To the Letters Association and the Hall of Fame Committee, thank you. Also, to everyone who made this moment possible for me, I'm more than thankful for being here right now. Um, I love you guys. To my, to my brother, glad, glad you're here as well, man. Um, you got to come here. You got to experience this moment. You got to see some of the things that I, that I vision. This is one of the visions that when I came here to make sure that you were good, players like you were good, and you came here, and you were able to have a, a successful career as well. To my girls, Ursula and Christy. Man, they have been around since, what, 99? And they still here today. And um, I'm really thankful for y'all. I'm thankful for y'all for just always being real, for always being that, being that phone call away. I could always call y'all for whatever. And I really, I really appreciate that for y'all. Appreciate y'all for that. Um, to my girlfriend and mom, thank y'all. Thank y'all for, even though y'all didn't get to see this moment, thank y'all for being there for me now. Thank you for, 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 for continuing to push me to be a, a better person and a better man. I just hope that everyone sees the impact that I really brought here. When I now look at Reed Arena and the growth of Texas A&M basketball, I am pleased to see that my vision became a reality. Thank you.